Welcome to the channel. My name is Greg. Today I'm making a smoked chicken soup, a more traditional chicken soup, and I'm going to can them. Let's get started. What I got here is a chicken. You'll see it's USDA exempt because this can only be sold in state. Raised on a small farm, processed by a state licensed place. It's almost five pounds. First I'm going to take it to my sink, get it out of its package. Okay, I'm going to take this chicken on the back side here. I find it just as easy to do this with scissors, kitchen shears. Can do it with a knife. Just want to go along the spine here. And just take out the backbone. And I'm doing this because cooking a whole bird, especially this one's pretty big for a chicken. It's almost five pounds. Um, you just run the risk of having parts of it be in the danger zone, especially at the low temperature cooking. So, I'm gonna cut out the backbone. I'm gonna save that for my other pot of soup. And then what I'm gonna do, huh, didn't defrost all the way, still a little bit of ice in there. I'm gonna take a knife, not my best knife, use a not great knife, just make a tiny cut right there. And that's just gonna help it flatten out. Just like that, bada boom, bada bang. Next, I'm just gonna flip it over and I'm gonna liberally salt this side. This is what's called a dry brine. And I get it, it might be counterintuitive. The dry brine would keep your chicken wet and moist. It does. And a lot of this salt's gonna fall off, so uh, it's okay to go, I'm going pretty heavy. And I'm gonna just real quick swap this out. For my tray with the rack. Gonna flop my bird on over. I'm gonna really salt the other side. Through the magic of osmosis, the salt is gonna draw moisture out of the meat. But it's not gonna dry out the meat because that moisture, that water is gonna go right back in, but it's gonna carry with it the seasoning from the salt. So it's gonna actually season the meat in a way that can't be done without some time. You can do a wet brine, it's another method. I like the way this dries out the skin, especially after the smoker. The skin can tend to be rubbery on a smoker. And since this is going on soup, it'll probably end up rubbery anyway. This is just gonna go in my refrigerator just like this overnight, up to 24 hours is great. One more little bit the night before preparation. Got one stick of uh, softened butter, unsalted. Gonna add, I don't know, it's probably about a teaspoon of rosemary. And I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of thyme. And then I'm just gonna mush that up. And uh, you know, if I was just making this as a compound butter, I'm, I would use salted butter or add salt. But because it's going on that chicken, which already has a lot of salt, I really don't need more salt. So this butter is going to go under the skin. The reason I don't want green leafy herbs on top is they're more likely to burn. I'm going to take some plastic wrap, spill this out on there. Pretty simple. And I'm just going to tuck that under a little. Just kind of roll it up, tighten these edges. And I'll put that in the refrigerator. Let it firm up a bit so that I can soften it again in the morning to put under the skin. See you tomorrow. It's a beautiful day outside. I think my charcoal chimney is eh, it's barely holding together. I don't feel safe using it anymore. So what I got going, so I just did it the old fashioned way. Stuck a couple of my homemade charcoal starters. Check it out. This is old lard that I've used for confeeing a couple times and didn't want to eat anymore. And I mixed it with sawdust, wrapped it up in some used parchment paper. I know it doesn't look too good. It gets it going every time. Takes a few of them, two or three. But hey, used lard, sawdust, all waste products. And by the time everything's gray, all the tallow and grease will burn off. I can put some wood on. So that's how I got my fire started today. Anyway, let's go finish getting that chicken ready. First, let's make a little rub. I'm gonna add some onion powder. I'll be honest, I'm not really following a recipe. I'm just kind of gonna add some stuff here. So I'm gonna say that's maybe a tablespoon. And I'm gonna add some garlic powder. Because this is meant to be a kind of when you're not feeling great. So the smoked one, it's like when you're feeling better. But I'm still going to add just a touch of ginger powder because ginger is supposed to be good for the tummy when it's not feeling good. And just for a little bit of color, going to add some paprika. Going about equal parts of each. I went a little less on the ginger, but everything else is about equal parts. And I'm going to add sweet Calabrian pepper. Again, could use spicy, you know, but I'm making this soup for... Uh, my tummy's not feeling the best. That's why I got two ways. I got the plain one for when I'm really not feeling good. And I got the smoked one for when I start feeling a little better. Simply going to mix that up. All right, I'm going to set that aside. 
Because first they want to put the butter under the skin. It's been in overnight in the refrigerator. Actually about probably 16 hours or so. And uh, you can see it's really quite a bit drier. I think you can see that. It's a little darker in color. Skin is a little dry. I put my compound butter in the oven with the light on about an hour ago. And uh, it just really softened it up. Oven with the light on is a great trick for softening butter, proofing bread, fermenting meat. I wash my hands. I'm not using gloves for this today. Simply going to take my compound butter and take the skin here. You can do kind of get your fingers under there between the skin and that pressed meat. Create a little pocket. And you can even get down here, lift that leg up. You kind of get under there to under that part. Now I'm just going to take some butter and I'm going to rub it in there. Making sure to try to get it all the way down into that thigh area. Now this would be a great recipe to use not for soup, just for chicken. And I'm really sad that I can't eat this smoked chicken straight up because of my damn colonoscopy. But obviously a whole stick of butter and the smoke, yeah, it's probably not the best really feeling sick meal. But you know, when you've been sick and you're starting to feel better, it's gonna be really delicious. All right, I'm gonna take the last bit of that butter, rub it on the outside. I know I said I didn't want the herbs on the outside because they might burn, but there's such a small amount in here, it's gonna be fine. Sure to get in here, get in there, get it everywhere. What I should have done first is put some rub on the bottom side. But as always, I uh, wasn't always thinking ahead as far as I could have been. Next step, I am gonna flip it over. I think it'll be all right. I won't lose too much butter because of that rack. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some of my rub on this bottom side. Pat that in. Don't ever rub your rub. It's okay to pat it, but don't rub it. Flip that boy over. And I'm just gonna sprinkle the top with the rub. They call it a rub, but it's not a rub. It's uh, you know, it's a sprinkling of flavored powders. Don't rub it. Both sides of them wings. Make sure to get it all around the sides. Don't forget sides. And uh, see what's under the legs. Don't forget about under the legs. It's like the underarms. Don't, don't can't forget to wash your underarms in the shower. Well, don't forget to rub your under legs with your chicken. You know, well, I've used most of it. I'm just gonna put the rest on. There's not much left. It'll be fine. Bald spot. Looking good. So when I break down a chicken, I always save the bone. So I'm going to throw this extra carcass on the smoker too. Put it in the soup for some extra flavor. And uh, let's go do that. Chicken's on. So you got the carcass in back. Chicken in front. That's where the heat comes from. So I got the legs on the hotter side so the breasts don't dry out. Close it up. Leave it on there for a little while. Don't go by time. I go by temperature. This is my smoker. I don't really love it very much. I don't like this vertical one but uh that's what i got for now every smoker is a little different this one here i just leave my air vents open pretty much 100 percent of the time i adjust my heat with the up here that's how i keep the temperature right so i would have put my probe thermometer in to that chicken but last time i used it it didn't work and this is the second one i've gone through recently and this is the weak point this right here this cramp this where the wire meets the probe seems to be the weak point so yeah, I've gone through two of these cheap ones recently. I think I'm gonna stop being so cheap and get a better probe thermometer because thermometers are an essential tool if you cook much meat. Instead, I'm gonna have to use this one, which is also a cheap one, but it works. But I'm gonna have to open the door, cool down the smoker, check it periodically when I think it's gonna be at a temperature and it's not as good as the probe. This is just as accurate as the more expensive ones. It just takes longer to get the temperature there, which means longer time with the door open cooling down the oven or the smoker or whatnot. I think I'll invest one of these days in the better one of these. Stop being so cheap. A thermometer is an essential tool if you cook much meat. First, you wanna make sure it's safe and it's reached safe eating temperatures. And second, you don't wanna overcook meat and dry it out. You know, an animal gave its life for you to eat. You wanna do as good a job with that as you can. Treat that animal's life with some respect and cook it well. Use a thermometer. Let's get this other chicken soup going. I'm gonna start by cutting up some carrots. Wash them all real good. Always wash your veggies. You know, if the tops are fine, that's where the green part comes from. That's where it rots first, but if that's okay, you can leave those too. Just gonna roughly chop them. I'm gonna take about a third, about a third of these into my pot for the uh, smoked chicken, and about two thirds into my pot for the not smoked chicken. I'm gonna take my celery. Again, I washed it. Spread it out real good. Make sure you spread you know, spread it out, get the water in there, and then just chop it up. No need to separate all the stalks. And hey, if your butt's clean, you can throw it in there too. Leaves, it's all good. So about two-thirds 
into the big pot and about a third into the small pot for the smoked one. I'm gonna take three pretty big onions. I don't need to show you how to peel these, do I? Cut them into quarters. One big onion per chicken, probably be good. Ah. It's all right, I can wash it off. Wash it off, it's all good. All right, next, chicken. I got that back that I saved off the one I smoked, the one I spatchcocked. And then I got a bag of thigh bones. And some sausages I recently made. Made the Greek chicken sausage, buffalo chicken sausage, and the uh, smoked garlic. Anyway, I'm gonna just put some rosemary in because I like rosemary. I would have bought fresh rosemary, but they didn't have it. A couple of sprigs of fresh thyme. Well, that's been in my fridge a few days too long. Gonna add some thyme. I would have used fresh thyme, but mine went bad in the fridge. Gonna throw in a couple of bay leaves. A couple, maybe three, why not? Oh, and something I always like to add to this. A little sprinkle of celery seeds. Then I'm just gonna cover that with water. Well, let's get real. It's gonna be stupid to do this by pitchers here at the table, so I'm just gonna go fill it up. So, just covered with just about an inch of water. Now I'm gonna go put this on the stove, medium high heat, covered till it boils, and then I'll turn it down, uncover it, leave it for like an hour and a half, skim the scum as I have to. We're getting real close here. 53. Oh man, I think I'm just gonna pull it, because you know, gonna cook a little more in the soup. I'd let it get up to like 158 if I was gonna eat it just like this, but it's going in soup. And the smoked chicken is ready. So we cooked it all at a low temperature. And uh, probably don't have the crispiest skin. No, actually, it's not bad. If I was going for a crispy skin, I would have turned up the temperature at the end, maybe even smoked it at 200 for a while to get as much smoke on it as I could, but I went about 225-ish until it was done, and uh, I might actually try a piece. I'm really supposed to change my diet for that fucking colonoscopy till tomorrow. And this is going right into the soup pot, and this is just gonna cool down till I can pull the meat off the bones, and then all the bones are going to the soup pot. And while I wait for that to cool down, I'm gonna cover this with water too. So you notice this one did not get any spices or herbs. And you'll notice the other one didn't get any salt. This one has a lot of salt. Gotta keep that all in mind when the final seasoning comes in. But for now, I'm basically cooking a broth. Pull that meat off once it cools down. Pull all the meat off, save this until it's ready to, for making the soup. So it's been about a little over an hour. Been keeping this at a gentle bubble. That chicken's pretty tender. Probably take it out in about 10 or 15 minutes here. And that's the smoky one. Gave it a taste. I think it needs something brighter, like I'm going to add some, I think, some marjoram to it. Some marjoram and maybe more rosemary. To be honest, I did not measure. I just added about that much rosemary, about that much marjoram. And I'm just going to keep letting this simmer away for another couple hours. After about an hour and a half of me doing absolutely nothing except skimming the scum off the top a couple times, these chickens are ready. Well, they need to cool down. Once they're cool enough to handle, I'll pull all the meat off, stick the bones and the skin back in there to keep cooking for a few more hours. Now that the chicken's out though, I'm gonna add a little bit of apple cider vinegar to my pot, and that's gonna help extract some more minerals out of those bones and supposedly help pull more collagen out of them. I'm not gonna add enough to really affect the flavor. It's a little controversial. Some pe Most people do it, some people don't. That's how I make bone broth. Well, I just pulled all the bones out of those two chickens. Gonna go add, add it back to my soup pot. And then I'm just gonna cut this up into size pieces I would want in soup. Either way, you can just break it up too. That works pretty good. But then you get to you get longer strands. If you want the little chunks like you get in the Campbell's soup, cut it up. I'm just gonna shred it because it's easier. I might do a mix. Some cubes, some shredded. Get a couple of different textures going. Why not? Got my chicken all cut up. Some of it's diced into cubes. Some of it's more shredded. Got a couple different textures. If you like the cube texture more, dice your chicken. If you like the shredded one, shred it. I don't care. You do you. I did some of both. Those bones have been cooking down a few more hours. Two and a half. Oh, so it's quickly going to uh, get these carrots ready. 
Don't mind these parts in the stock, but I don't want them in my finished soup. These are the veggies for the finished soup. So I'm gonna take the bigger part, cut it in half, cut it in half, and that's about the size I want my carrots. They're not that small. Not so small they'll disintegrate when they're pressure canned, but small enough to fit on a spoon. So just like that, I'm gonna finish these up real quick. Smaller ones, I might just cut them in half instead of quarters. All right, I get it, it seems like a lot of carrots. There's three chickens worth of chicken soup. It's a lot of chicken soup. So I started with six pounds of carrots. I put half of them in the stock. Right now, it's gonna get tossed out with the bones. And that's the other half there. I used one bunch of celery in the stock, using another bunch here in the soup. Gonna cut off the butt ends here. Celery is a little firmer, probably won't disintegrate in there. Still don't want too big a bite, but these are looking pretty good to me. And last, I got three medium onions. Just gonna chop these, go down, not all the way, cross, not all the way, flip it on its side, bam. Just mix up this little mirepoix type material. Yeah, it looks like a lot, but again, it's for three chickens worth of soup. Next, I'm gonna go drain that, drain the bones and vegetables out of that stock and, uh, and move to the next step. Well, I've had these bones and veggies cooking for about three hours since the chicken came out. This is the smoked one, but I'm just gonna pour it through a strainer. No big deal. No need for a cheesecloth or anything like that. I would use a metal pot if I had one big enough for this extra, but um, this is a number five polycarbonate Cambro bucket and it's rated for up to 210 degrees. I still don't really like hot liquids and plastic, but um, it's what I got. They say it's okay. I'm doing it. So I'm afraid this is all gonna plop out into there. Don't really want it to do, cause it'll make a big mess, I think. So I'm gonna go remove some of it and then just dump the last little bit so I get all the liquid. That was almost a close call. The strainer doesn't fit that great. Gonna real quick wash this pot out, put this liquid back in here. Don't let it hang in the plastic longer than I need to. I'm just gonna pour my stock back into my pot. Take these vegetables that I cut up. I'm gonna take about one third. It's basically one medium onion per chicken and one pound of carrots per chicken. And I used one bunch of celery for all three chickens. I think that's probably about a third. I'm gonna put that back on the stove to start softening these vegetables a little bit. Those vegetables that were in the stock, they've given everything they have. They have no texture left. They have no flavor left. This is for the soup. All right, I'm gonna go do the same thing with the big pot. I'll be back just a few minutes before we start canning. So the veggies have been back cooking in there for about 15 minutes. It's time to add this chicken in. This is the time to taste for seasoning. Obviously this one has no salt. It's gonna need some salt. The smoked one has a bit of salt in the chicken, but we'll see how much of that carries through. Might need salt too. Sorry, I don't have a camera set up in my kitchen. I'll show you part of why in a sec here. Let's check it out. I got this new gas stove recently. And it was an eighth of an inch too big to fit. So I have this gap in the back that's ugly. And on the side, the tiles have been falling off of this thing for a while and it's all ugly. So I want to get rid of this. Remodel my kitchen a tiny bit. We'll see one of these days. Anyway, I know this is going to need salt, but I'm going to taste it to get an idea how much. I'm going to give that a healthy, healthy pinch or three probably. It's a big pot of soup, you know, there's no salt added yet. Let's see what that did. You know, sometimes salt is love. This chicken soup is all about love, so let's give it some salt. I know that might have looked like a crazy big pinch, but... Oh yeah, that's good. Let's give this one a taste. That smells smoky and good. How's its salt level? You know, it's pretty good. I'm gonna give it one pinch. It's a smaller pot, and it already has a bit of salt in that chicken. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Oh, wow, that's so good. I like the smoked one better, I gotta say, but this one is more classic. And if you're not feeling good, it's probably better. So if you're cooking the soup to eat right away, I would just add the chicken when I added the veggies and just let it cook together for about a half hour. 
or if you're gonna freeze it, but I'm pressure canning mine and I don't wanna cook the chicken any more than I have to. I just wanna warm it back up, really. You cannot do a water bath with chicken soup. It's not a low acid food. If you don't have a pressure canner, you're probably not interested in this part. And if you do, you probably already know about it, but that's fine. So I just wanted to quickly show you. If you can see how this, get better light on that. You see that ring? See how it's an indentation compared to the new one where it's flat. That's how you know it's used. That's why you can't reuse these flats reliably. You need to use a new flat every time. You can reuse these bands. That's fine. So I've washed my lids, my flats with soapy water. Got these heated up. My jars have been heated up. Either simmer them in water or put them in a dishwasher. And go test these soups for salt. So you got to want to make sure that you're starting out with clean hot jars. I said you can either run them through the dishwasher keep them simmering in hot water don't boil them just just simmering in hot water is fine same with your rims flats can just be washed with hot soapy water they're golden and then we're simply going to just fill these up and leave about an inch up to call it head space at the top mm. that smoky chicken's really good now there's no starch in here because starches like noodles and potatoes really don't can well they break down if you're freezing it you could add those now or if you're eating it, obviously now. But it's really not that big a deal. You just uh, cook up some rice or some pasta. That's all you gotta do to have this chicken soup with noodles. Chicken noodle soup, just make the noodles. Chicken rice soup, just make the rice. The soup's done for you, and it's really delicious. And yeah, I'm probably a little partial to the smoked one because I just love smoked food. But sometimes it's not what your body's telling you to have. So the next thing, take a clean paper towel, make sure to wipe the rim because any water or oil will get in between your seal. Could keep you from getting a good seal and we wouldn't want that. Next, place these right down in the center. Again, these are just washed with hot soapy water. They're kept pretty hot right now. I'm not gonna cinch them super tight, just a little bit snug. Basically, I'm gonna turn it till it just wants to stop. You know, that's very loose. I can, and then I'm gonna go like just a little bit more, maybe an eighth turn, quarter turn more. Now they're ready to go in the pressure canner. Now I'm just gonna do the same thing with this big pot of the, uh, I'm gonna call it the wholesome chicken soup. The one that's not smoked. The one you wanna really have when you're uh, sick. So I've got a few bowls left from outside the canner to eat. And I got 14 quarts for when I'm feeling sick sometime down the road. So my pressure canner, see I got one of these. Got this tray in the bottom that keeps the jars off the very bottom. And I got the water filled to, well you can't really see that well, but eh, about an inch. I guess there's not much left to do but start filling jars. Once you have one, if you have a big enough cooker that you can do more than one layer, not all of them are, you need a second plate and then you load up the next layer. It's full, it's ready to go. So my pressure canner does not have a gasket. It's a metal to metal seal. So you can't put the lid on just any old way. It has a groove here on the pot and it has a arrow notched into the lid. So you gotta line those two up. And then I also like to make sure that this is even all the way around when I'm done. See how it's lower over here than it is over here right now? Gotta make sure you don't tighten it down like that. It's kind of like putting a tire on. You wanna alternate. Work your way around, skip one. All right, here's what I was trying to show you. This right here should be even all the way around. It shouldn't be like touching in one place and really high in another. It should be relatively even all the way around. Well, mine has a release valve. Some of them have a weight. If yours has a weight, you leave the weight off of it until it steams. Let it steam for 10 minutes, they say. After 10 minutes, I'll shut this down. Some of them just have a weight that you put on different ways for 5, 10, 15 PSI. But with this type, this type you can uh, dial in your pressure to exactly what you're going for, which in this case is gonna be 10 PSI. It's been steaming for about 10 minutes. Shut that down. Wait for the pressure to get up to 10 PSI. I'm a little above 10. 
Keep it right around 10 as best I can. These are going to have to go for an hour and a half. Pints only need 75 minutes, but I got quartz. It's going to take an hour and a half, and that's because I'm uh, relatively close to sea level. If you live at higher altitudes, 1,000 feet, 1,000 feet or more, you have to add pressure. But uh, if you have a pressure canner and you live at altitude, you probably know that. If you don't look it up, it varies depending on your altitude. A huge percentage of people live within 1,000 feet of sea level. And for us, 10 PSI is going to be plenty. It's interesting. If you're 1,000 feet above sea level, you have less air above you. The atmosphere weighs less. It's because there's the weight of all the air above you. There's more air above you when you're at sea level. But uh, yeah, that's a whole other topic. That's not the topic of my channel. Ask Bill Nye or something about that. He'll explain it better than me. So it's been an hour and a half. Turn the heat off. Don't do anything with this. Don't take your weight off. Don't lift that up. Gotta wait for this to get down to zero. Cooker's off the heat. It's come down to the zero. So now we can open this. I usually open it away from me so the steam goes that way. Now these are still super hot. You can't touch them. They're pretty much still boiling. But I'm just going to put them out on this towel and they're going to stay here overnight. Look at that. Crazy, huh? Got to leave these here overnight till they've cooled down completely. Don't push the lids then either. As they cool, it will suck that lid in. It is now the next day and we're almost done. Now it's time to take these bands off. Kind of an important step because as they can, pushes out some steam and liquid sometimes and if you leave this on that can be stuck on that rim. And now that they're sealed they don't need the rim. These rings are just holding that lid on until they make a seal. If you see any of them bowing up, they probably didn't seal. Make sure you check them. But uh, it's pretty obvious they're not that easy to open when they seal. Next step, I'm gonna take a, just a damp towel, gonna wipe off that ring area. And the final step in this, label them and put the date. I've got my smoked chicken soup. I've got my just regular feel good chicken soup. They're great as they are. If I wanna cook up some pasta or rice and add it when I'm ready to eat them, just take it off the shelf. So just keep them in a cool, dark place and they'll stay good for a long time, years really. Worst thing for them is the light. The color will fade, the texture will become less desirable, but these will last a long, long time without refrigeration and taking up any of my space in my precious freezer. Hmm, it's really good. It's not the season for a chicken soup video. By the time I publish this, if I do, this colonoscopy is going to be way behind me. It's not really the food I've been putting on my channel, but hey, sometimes we all got to eat different for whatever reason. But this is truly a delicious soup for being so simple and basic. Good fresh ingredients, cooked slow, cooked really not that much time. I mean, it's taking all day. There's not much hands-on time once you cut everything up. It's just hearty and good and lighter. Well, if you like this video, if you learned anything, Frankly, if you're still watching it at this point, you should give it a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe to my channel. Put some love into the food you make. Peace.